So today we'll be discussing open exploration of the Recover Adult Cohort on Biodata Catalyst. So if you're a researcher, you may be aware that data discovery can be difficult. Um, and there are a few contributing factors to this. Uh, perhaps the complex data can be difficult or hard to understand. Um, so some examples of this are uh, studies or data sets that combine many different data types, such as electronic health records, longitudinal data, um, biospecimen or biosample data, imaging data, and so on. So getting a full or a complete understanding of all of those data types in one place can be difficult. Additionally, if you're a researcher starting your research project, you often know your research question, but it can be difficult to take that next step and find that data that actually applies well to your research question. So perhaps I'm a researcher and I know I'm interested in two different phenotypes um, related to COVID. Uh, how can I go and find a data set that has the two phenotypes I'm interested in and has enough information for me to actually conduct my research? Finally, there are some barriers to entry when exploring data, depending on how you go about it. Some sites require login, other sites don't really allow you to get into the data much without getting access to the data. So it, it, it's a barrier to entry with that data discovery process. <clears throat> so in order to address these, these difficulties or these concerns, um, there is a publicly available or an open tool on Biodata Catalyst that allows for data exploration. This tool is called Picture Open Access. Um, so Picture Open Access is a publicly available cohort building or query building tool. And uh, this tool promotes equity to data exploration by allowing anyone to use the tool. So there's no login required. You can go along. Um, I'll be doing a demo later. So you can actually go to the site yourself and follow along um, and see the same, the same results that I'm seeing. Additionally, uh, this tool allows the discovery of and interaction with all data available on Biodata Catalyst. So I know we're here today to discuss the Recover Adult Cohort Study, but I did want to mention that all Biodata Catalyst data sets are available on Picture Open Access for search and exploration. So what is Picture Open Access or what can you do with this tool to actually explore the data? Uh, first, you can search for terms of interest to discover variables. So if you're interested in certain phenotypes or clinical outcomes, you can type those into the search bar and find variables that match your search. After reviewing the variables that match your search term, uh, maybe you'll find one that, that matches your project very well or that you're interested in. You can actually apply a filter on that variable that kind of acts as a, an inclusion criteria to, to select participants or to build a cohort. And so once you, once you add that filter or apply that inclusion criteria, you're then able to review counts of participants that meet that query criteria. And finally, to get an even, even better understanding of the data or a better understanding of the cohort you're building, you're actually able to visualize some of the results or some of the variables that you've added to your cohort. Now, I will say that with Picture Open Access, since this is a public tool, um, there are precautions or steps that are taken to protect the participant level data. So one, one of those steps is the uh, count obfuscation. So when you receive the, when you receive or um, when you retrieve the, the counts of the participants that meet your criteria, those will actually be obfuscated. So it gives you a general idea of the number of participants that meet that criteria, but not an exact number. Additionally, uh, certain variables are flagged as sensitive or stigmatizing. And even though you can view these variables in open picture, you can't filter on them. Um, so some examples of these stigmatizing variables include mental health diagnoses, um, history or treatment, uh, sexual history, and also other legal identifying related variables. But for a complete list of those, of those categories or how we identify those, um, I included the link to our publicly available GitHub repository so you can refer to that for additional information. Finally, because this is just a data exploration tool, you, you aren't authorized to access the, the data yet. There is no export of participant level data from this tool. So 
So we are here today to discuss the Recover Adult Cohort, which is now available on Biodata Catalyst. Um, so earlier we played the video uh, given by Dr. Goff that described the Recover Adult Cohort or the Recover Initiative as being a long COVID-focused initiative. So today I'll be providing a few demos about uh, some tools available. And for these demos, I'll use a couple of different phenotypes or a couple of different variables. Uh, the first is post-acute sequelae of SARS-CoV-2 infection or PASC. Um, and just to provide the definition of this, it's defined as ongoing, relapsing, or new symptoms or conditions present 30 or more days after infection. Um, one unique aspect of this Recover adult cohort or this Recover data set that's available is that a, a recent publication actually developed a scoring mechanism for PASC um, derived from frequently reported symptoms of long COVID or from those with long COVID. And so this is a numeric score ranging from 0 to 34. And so if you would like more information about exactly how this score was determined or, or the symptoms that go into this deriving this score, I included the publication here on the, on the slides as well. <clears throat> Additionally, I'll be using headaches or head pain and biospecimens or biosample information as well. All right, so let's get into it. We can go to the live demo here. So we'll go to picture open access. Just refresh, make sure I didn't lose anything. Okay, so when you navigate to picture open, open access, this is what you'll see. As you may have noticed, there was no login, no, no, nothing required to, to access this site. You're simply able to get in there and start exploring. So you'll see a search bar here where you can search for your uh, term of interest um, or studies or variables, a couple of actions that you can take. And I wanted to point out this, this bar down here that provides a summary of the amount of data available in BDC. Um, so as you can see, there are 97 studies available with over 400,000 participants that you can search and query from. But today we'll focus on the recover study specifically. So I mentioned that the PASC score was, was one of the uh, derived variables or information that's available in the recover data set. So let's go ahead and search for derived PASC score. And I will click search. So now this is doing a search across all information related to a variable. So the variable name, the variable description, and even the values within the variable. So if there are categories that relate to your search. You can see, based on this search, there are over 12,000 variables that match my search. That's quite a few to go through, so I would like to refine my search results a bit. So I go over here to the left-hand panel, and we can see that all studies, or most studies, are, are included in these search results that are available in BDC. But today, we're focused on the Recover Adult Cohort, so I'm going to refine my search results to only show um, matching results from the Recover Adult Study. So here I'm going to click the plus. And so now my search results are updated to show only Recover Adult related results. <clears throat> so taking a look at these quickly, I'm scanning down and I see here, PASC score at time of survey based on the definition from the publication I referred to earlier. So this is exactly the, the type of variable that I'm interested in as a researcher. So if I'd like to learn more about it, I can go ahead and click on the row here. And this displays additional information related to the variable. So I can see variable level information, including the variable type. So I see that this is a continuous variable or a numeric variable, which matches my expectation, right? It's a score from zero to 34. <clears throat> I can see information about the data set, including the name, accession, and, and description about that data set, as well as the study information. So now that I've identified a variable, I can go ahead and apply a filter on this in order to set some inclusion criteria and start narrowing down my cohort. So I will click on the filter icon that's next to the variable accession up here. So here I'm taking to, taken to the filtering step. So we can see that because this is a numeric variable, I can specify a minimum and 
and maximum or maximum to uh, filter by. So if I'm interested, I could specify a minimum of 12 to get between 12 and 34 as the scores. But today, because I'm just exploring and trying to get an understanding of the data, I'm actually going to leave it blank to just filter to participants that have a score. So I'll go ahead and add filter to query. Now, if we come over here, I can see that there are 14,000 or so participants uh, that have a score in this baseline um, PASC score variable. So you can start to get an idea of the number of participants that have information that you're interested in. Let's go ahead because this is a longitudinal study. So participants are coming back at certain time points over time. I'll go ahead and do the follow-up one visit as well, indicated by this F1 in this variable name. So let me filter here. Again, I see a very similar screen between 0 and 34 for past scores at time of follow-up one, and I click Add Filter to Query. So now I can see that both baseline and follow-up one are included in my added filters. So this means that there are 12,200 or so participants that have a PASC score derived from baseline and follow-up one. Great, so let's uh, take a look at head pain related variables. That was the other phenotype or outcome that I was interested in. So I searched for head pain in the search bar and pressed enter or clicked search. And I can see all of the variables that are related to head pain within the recover study. So I see there's a head pain around the time of index. Um, if we click next here, I can see head pain now at the time of the survey. And I can also see head pain before, the year before the index. So I'm getting an idea of the type of information that's available in the recover study. So let's say as a researcher, I'm interested in head pain at the time of survey. So the head pain now uh, related variables. I'll go ahead and keep my time points consistent here. So I'll do baseline again. I can click filter. This one, because it's a categorical variable or a discrete variable, the screen looks slightly different. So originally I could specify a min and a max, but now I see the different categories that I can select. So either does not have symptom now or has symptom now. I will go ahead and select both of them again because I'm interested in just getting a feel for the data that's out there. So selecting both and clicking add filter to query. So again, the total number of participants here was updated, and I can see my, my pain head now uh, variable added here. Again, I'll do the follow-up one time point, so this F1 time point again, and do the same process. Great, so now I'm really narrowing down or starting to narrow down my cohort by specifying these inclusion criteria. So, 11,870 or so participants have PASC scores and head pain now data for baseline and follow-up one in the recover study. So let's say I'll stop there for now, um, and, and I want to learn more about this cohort, right? I'm not going to add any more inclusion criteria, but let me take a peek and, and dive into this a little bit. I can click the variable distributions tool that's in the tool suite here. And what this will do is give me a peek into the distributions of each of the variables that I've added to my query based on the cohort I've created. So here I can start to get an idea of uh, what the breakdown is for each of these variables. So I see my head pain now at baseline versus head pain now at, at follow-up one. So um, interestingly, it looks like the number is increasing at follow-up one between baseline and follow-up one. And I can also see the distribution of PASC scores as well between follow here's follow-up one and here's baseline. So just kind of giving me a sense, helping me inform my research or my research plan um, based on my research question that I have in my mind. Another unique aspect of the recovered data set is the biospecimen availability. And so one way to tell or to search across biospecimens is to search biospecimens in picture. 
And this will give you an idea of the types of biospecimens that are available or the biospecimens that have been collected. So here we see cell preparation tubes, um, EDTA, uh, plasma aliquot volumes, and so on. So I encourage you, if biospecimens is part of your research plan, to take a look and, and familiarize yourself with what's available in the RECOVER study. So perhaps as a researcher, I'm interested in urine biospecimens. So I can try searching biospecimens urine. So here I'm actually able to filter to participants that have had a urine collection at different time points or at enrollment or follow-up one. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So if I click on the filter icon next to enrollment for urine collection, I can specify those that did have that specimen collected. So if I click add filter to query, I again, am getting a feel for the number of participants here. I can do the same with follow up one. So now I see, okay, with uh, those that have past scores and those that reported head pain now or, or did not have head pain now at baseline and follow up one and had a urine sample collected at baseline and follow up one or enrollment and follow up one, that's about 630 folks that, that are included in my cohort. So this number is really useful um, when you're developing your research project or, or your research plan or analysis plan to perform some quick back of napkin power calculations and statistical analyses plans to, to determine if you have an, enough data or enough participants to um, perform proper statistical analyses. So very quickly, I wanted to point out two additional resources for exploring recovered data that are available to you. The first is the Picture Recover Adult Cohort Data Dictionary Spreadsheet. This is also a publicly available data dictionary that is based on the variables that are available in Picture Open Access. Um, and these are uh, mapped to the REDCap Recover instruments that are used in the actual Recover codebook or the Recover data. Um, so kind of merges those two types of uh, data dictionaries and, you know, provides a single source for you to explore if you're interested in exploring on BDC. Additionally, I did want to point out the release notes on the Recover data set. So these are available, again, publicly available on the Biodata Catalyst documentation or Gitbook. And uh, these will have, you know, as we're releasing new versions of this recover data set that have additional information or perhaps changes between versions, it is important to consult the release notes to determine what has changed with this new version or, or um, what, what, it, what, what is included in this data set. So I encourage you to check out the release notes there too. <laughs> 